so where we are going to start today is we are on our day eight in class notes. So you should have your packets out. If you don't have your packets out, take them out. If you don't have your packet, just take your notes on a separate sheet of paper. We are looking at the unit circle again. So your last video was where did the unit circle come from? Now it's really important that you are able to create the unit circle on your own. You're going to make the unit circle quite a few times. So when we're looking at this, I'm going to start with degrees because degrees are the easiest. When we start at the beginning, we are starting at zero degrees. And then everything is being added by 30s. This is our first pattern. So 30, we're going to skip this one. 30 plus 30 is 60, plus 30 is 90, plus 30 is 120, plus 30 is 150, plus 30 is 180, plus 30 is 210, plus 30 is 240, plus 30 is 270, plus 30 is 300, plus 30 is 330, plus 30 is 360. So this first pattern is adding, everything is adding 30 degrees each time. But now if I look in between there, this is the halfway mark. The halfway between zero and 90 is 45. So the other pattern is adding 45s each time. Zero plus 45 is 45, plus 45 is 90. 90 plus 45 is 135 plus 45 is 180, plus 45 is 225, plus 45 is 270, plus 45 is 315, plus 45 is 360. So the axes numbers, those are going to be part of both the 30, 60, 90 pattern as well as the 45 pattern. So you're going to hit those regardless of the pattern that you're using. So that's the first one, filling in all your degrees. With your radians, the third, instead of adding by 30s, you're going to add by 1 sixth. So 1 sixth plus 1 sixth is 2 over 6, but 2 over 6 reduces down to 1 third. Remember, radians are about pi. So 1 plus 1 gives us 2 over 6, plus 1 sixth is 3 over 6. And if I have 3 pi over 6, this is 1 half. So remember, this is 1 6, 2 6, 3 6. This is 4 6, which is 2 thirds pi. If this was 4, this means that this is 5 pi over 6. And if I add one more, 5 plus 1 is 6 over 6, and 6 over 6 is just 1 pi. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 6. And then we're at 8 pi over 6, but that reduces down to 4 thirds. This is 9 pi over 6, which reduces down to 3 halves. This is 10 pi over 6, which reduces down to 5 pi over 4. Oops, that's in the wrong spot. Mm. 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 4. And then that makes this 11 pi over 6. And then 12 pi over 6 gives you 2 pi. Do you need to write these numbers here? No, we only need the reduced fraction, but I wrote them so that you could see where all of those numbers were coming from. Because remember, it's just a matter of adding one sixth every time. Now, when we add the 45s, we're adding one fourth. One fourth plus one fourth is two over four, which is one half. Two over four plus one is three pi over four. Remember, we're adding one fourth each time. If I add one fourth to three fourths, I'm at one. Then I add another fourth. Now I'm at five pi over four. I add one fourth, I'm at three halves. I add one fourth, I add one fourth. 
So here you're adding the sixth each time, here you're adding one fourth each time. Then comes your cosine, sine, and tangent. For your cosine, those are your x's. So don't forget cosine is x, sine is y, tangent is y over x. So if I'm traveling here to here, I'm going the long way to the right, the short way up. So this is going to be root 3 over 2, up 1 half. Because root 3 over 2 is bigger than 1 half, we want the long way over, the short way up. So if I'm going to 60, I want the short way to the left, or to the right, and the long way up. Now if I go over here to 120, I want the short way left, so that 1 half is going to go negative. The y is still going to stay positive. If I go to the 150, now I'm going the long way left, making that a negative root 3 over 2, the short way up. Go down to negative 2, or go down to 210, I'm going the long way left, and the short way down. So left is negative, down is negative. For 240, we're going the short way left, and the long way down. 300, the short way to the right, which is positive 1 half, the long way down, making that negative. And then 330, the long way right, and the short way down. Those are the hard ones. The 45s are easy because I'm going the same amount right as I am up, so that's root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2. Now for 90, I'm not going left, right, any, but I'm going up one. Here I went left, so the x is negative, but I still went up, so the y is positive. Here we're going left one, up, down, none. Here we went left and down, making the x and the y both negative. Here I didn't go left, right, any, but I went down one. I went right and down. I went right one, up, down, zero. All right, so we're almost done here. Now we need the tangents. The tangent is the y divided by the x. When you divide, you end up here. The same thing divided by itself is just one, root three, the y divided by the x, that's 1 over 0. That means that our tangent is undefined. Since we went left, this is negative root 3. These are related. Negative 1, negative root 3 over 3. Here, this is 0 because it's y divided by x, 0 over negative 1. Root 3 over 3, 1 root 3, negative root 3, negative 1, negative root 3 over 3. Okay, that should have been your third time creating the unit circle. Okay, so the third time it should be a little bit more familiar. Now we're going to look at how do I use the unit circle. All right, so I just pulled up a clean unit circle so that we can see the whole unit circle as well as the question by itself. So when I look at the first question here, it is saying sine of 5 pi over 6. I see the fact that it says sine. Sine means I am looking for the y value of 5 pi over 6. I look at my unit circle, I go and I find 5 pi over 6. I see that 5 pi over 6 is where the 150 is. So that tells me where to look and the sign value is telling me which one to look for. It's looking for the y coordinate of that location. So my answer here is 1 half. Number 2 is asking for the cosine, which is x, of 120. So it's saying go to 120. I look at my unit circle, I find 120. Here's the location of 120 degrees. 
it is saying find the cosine value, the x value. The x coordinate at the location of 120 is a negative 1 half. Number three says the tangent of 300, so that's your y over x. We have that labeled on our circle, so we don't have to worry about making that calculation. But it's saying look at 300 degrees. So I go and I look at 300 degrees. I go around my circle. I find 300. Here is 300. It's asking for the tangent value that's down there in purple. So I go to 300. That's my location. Which coordinate am I looking at? I'm looking at tangent, which is a negative root 3. Number 4 is going to give us a little review of negative angle measures. <clears throat> so we see 3 pi over 4. And if I look at my unit circle over here, Here's 3 pi over 4, which is at 135. But it didn't ask us to go to a 3 pi over 4. It asked us to go to a negative 3 pi over 4. So instead of traveling in the positive direction, 135 degrees, it's telling me to travel a negative direction, 135. So this is really going to put us at 5 pi over 4. We're traveling this direction, that same amount, and it's asking for the cosecant. So a little bit different. Cosecant is the reciprocal of y. So I look at 5 pi over 4. And when I look at 5 pi over 4, I see that my y value is a negative root 2 over 2. So if I have a negative root 2 over 2, and I want to do the reciprocal of that, we get 2 over a negative root 2. We have to rationalize. And when I rationalize, that ends up with 2 root 2 over a negative 2. These simplify. So I end up with just a negative root 2 as my answer. All right, you have noticed that my screen has changed. I have gone backwards. So we're actually looking at the back side of your video notes from yesterday. So we're looking at the back side of the day seven video. And when you look at the bottom, this just kind of reviews the different values within the quadrants. So if we think about the unit circle, here's my unit circle. We have our we have our quadrants. We've got quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. One thing that's really going to help you is if you think about what kind of values you should expect to find within each quadrant. So if my first focus is on sine. Sine is the y value. So if I'm in quadrant one, I have gone up which is gonna make sine positive. If I'm in quadrant one, I've gone to the right, which is gonna make cosine positive because I'm going right and I'm going up. And tangent is sine divided by cosine, so positive divided by positive is still a positive. This is gonna be true for all the reciprocals. If I do the reciprocal of a positive number, I'm at positive. If I do the reciprocal of cosine, and the reciprocal of tangent. Reciprocal of positive is still positive. The reciprocals are just switching the numbers, not the signs. Now, if we go to quadrant two, what's changed is I'm now going left. And when I go left, what that's gonna change is my cosine value is now gonna turn negative, which just means all my secant values will be negative as well. But I'm still going up, which means sine is still gonna be positive and cosecant, it's still going to be positive. What this also changes is tangent, because remember, tangent is y divided by x. Now we have a positive divided by a negative, so my tangent and my cotangents are going to be negative. And then quadrant three, when I'm in quadrant three, this is requiring me to move, let's see, to the left, which is making cosine negative, 
and I'm moving down, which is making sine negative as well, which means secant is negative and cosecant is negative. Don't forget tangent is y divided by x, so now we've got a negative divided by a negative, which makes our tangent positive and our cotangent positive. Last quadrant here, quadrant four, we are going right and we are going down. Since we are going right, cosine is positive. Since we're going down, sine is negative, which means secant is positive and cosecant is negative. Since tangent is y divided by x, we've got a negative divided by a positive. My tangent is negative and my cotangent is negative. All right, so that is it for today, but remember the focus here was, can you now make the unit circle knowing those patterns? And then can you use the unit circle? Remember, it tells you the trig function out front, tells you where, to, what part of the angle to look at. The number inside is telling you which angle to go to, what location to find. All right, so we are done.